Um, you know, Megan and Christine are obviously good friends of mine and people whose work I have um, incredible respect and admiration for. Um, I really do feel privileged to be able to hang this work up on the stage. And <clears throat> the, um, but what we're about to experience is, I mean, in fact, most people think that Megan Hildebrand is an artist, but, but we accepted her as our resident historian. Um, she's been dabbling in painting and drawing and so on, and, and this thing called performance for a while. But really, she is a historian, and it's, it's, it's very comforting to know, especially for those of us who were born and bred um, in Southeast Baltimore, that what you're about to hear is 100% accurate. Um, and there will be no factual errors, so if you remember things differently, then I'm sorry to say you are mistaken in that. But um, <clears throat> Megan is a wonderful talent. She speaks with authority. So I would like to uh, welcome her to the stage, if we could all please. Megan Hildebrandt. Dear Francis Scott Key, I know you're dead and all, but I have a lot of unanswered questions for you regarding this whole Star Spangled Banner thing. Okay, I get that you were floating in a truce ship during the Battle of Baltimore because you were just some God-fearing, peace-loving, wishing you had been born in the 1960s hippie attorney, getting your friend out of a tight spot with the British. But if you were so intensely patriotic, so full of U.S. pride, enough to write and emotionally charged, tugging at our national heartstrings, making our American tear ducts leak poem. Why weren't you just fighting in the Battle of Baltimore to begin with? I mean, seriously, Francis, what's getting one measly prisoner out of captivity really going to do in the grand scheme of things? It's obvious you cared enough to have fought. You even made the Star Spangled Banner rhyme. Why don't you just put your money where your mouth is and shoot off a couple of cannons, you little wuss? <laughs> Even more disturbing is why you went into law in the first place when it's obvious your true passion was poetry. Maybe your parents were unsupportive of your tinkering with the written word, or you were afraid you'd be poor if you devoted yourself wholeheartedly to the pen and ink. But oh, think of it, Francis. If you would only set aside the silly law thing sooner, we could have dozens, hundreds more national anthems to choose from. <laughs> but to be honest, Francis, maybe I'm aiming a little too high trying to talk to you about all this Baltimore history. I mean, I live really far away from where you were floating in our Baltimore waters. You were over near Fort McHenry, and I'm all the way over here in Highland Town. Maybe I need to find someone a little bit more local to talk to about all this history. Mary Pickersgill, who lived in Little Italy. Not exactly our part of town, but getting closer. Ring a bell, Francis? Not even a Liberty Bell. Mary's the one who sewed the flag. She's the reason your little poem got written at all. She's the little reason your poem got written at all. And she was not just some Betsy Ross wannabe. No, indeed. Mary Pickersgill was a humanitarian, a businesswoman, a single mom. Most importantly for you, Francis, Mary was a woman who did her job well. Had the flag she made for Fort McHenry been any smaller than the ingenious 30 by 42 foot measurement Mary P. figured out, you yourself would have been highly unlikely to see it through those bombs bursting in air. Hail Mary, am I right, Francis? Dear Mary Pickersgill, as the woman who made the flag Francis Scott Key got so famous off of, I have decided that you deserve a historical reenactment. At first, I researched online to figure out if there were any Mary Pickers Gill fan clubs I could join, or if there were any historical reenactors already taking care of business for you. But there were none. Can you believe it? The possible candidates are probably all sitting in some room in Philadelphia, reenacting Betsy Ross making the flag. Well, I, for one, have got my historical facts straight, and so I, too, will be making a 30 by 42 foot 15 star garrison flag. And Mary, I just wanted to point, thank you. Mary, I just wanted to point out that I really had to dig for all these indisputable, completely historical facts. The Maryland Historical Society, the Enoch Pratt Library, and numerous calls to both the Flag House and Fort McHenry. 
The far park ranger at Fort McHenry who answered the phone when I called actually seemed very annoyed with my questions. I'm just not certain what your question actually is, ma'am, she stated. There just ain't no real way to tell whether Francis himself knew that Betsy Ross didn't make the flag, whether he knew Mary Pickersgill, a local flag maker, had actually made it. We just don't have access to that kind of information. He was in the middle of a war, ma'am. It probably didn't even occur to him. At this point, two things infuriated me. One, the ranger on the phone had referred to Francis Scott Key on a first name basis, just like I had been when telling friends who I was researching. What right did she have to talk about Francis so casually? I immediately felt like a jealous girlfriend, like he was cheating on me with the park ranger who didn't care about him like I did. Her, with her, how could you, Francis? She's just some second-rate historian who cannot even answer these simplest questions about your thought process, artistic motivation, and knowledge of local flag maker accreditation in 1814. Who did this woman think she was trying to rob us of our nationhood? <sighs> Francis, I could have been with you in that ship. I could have helped you come up with alternative adjectives and endings for the Star Spangled Banner. I don't get seasick. She wouldn't have understood why you were writing during the battle. And then where would we be? We would have no national anthem at all. Really? Next slide. <laughs> Dear Mary, I don't remember what's coming now, Mary. Sew me a flag, Mary. <laughs> Probably. No way to tell. Don't have access to that kind of information. I call Fort McHenry for facts, not so they can make up stories. I want my historical research to be set in stone, immovable, and completely reliable. <laughs>